My presentation starts with a very simple question. What is your lucky number? How many single men in the hall? That's how you ask a girl out. What's your lucky number? So let's say very simple. What's your lucky number? Eight. He's so Chinese. Every time I meet Chinese, they tell me eight, eight, eight. I meet Hindus, they tell me one zero eight. I meet Muslims, they tell me seven eight six. Some people tell me thirteen is unlucky. Some people tell me nine is magic. What we realize is numbers are important in people's life, but the most important number in the world is twenty eight thousand, because twenty eight thousand is the average number of days a person lives, which is equal to seventy six point seven one years. Let's assume it's approximately eighty. Now, I like to break this eighty into four parts: zero to twenty, twenty to forty, forty to sixty, sixty to eighty. Zero to twenty, what do we do? Study, play, fool around. Twenty to forty, we get our first job. We get our first car. We buy our first house. You get a first house before you get married, my friend. Because I heard that. First wife. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we get married. You have kids. Am I correct? Forty to sixty, you'll probably change your job or move up in your career. You'll get a second job. You'll probably get a second car. It's twenty years. You're driving a piece of junk. You probably buy a second house as an investment. Second wife you cannot afford, but your kids are finishing their first part of life. Sixty to eighty, we hope to retire. Now, this part of my life is the most important. Why? Because there is no income. So we started with how many days? Twenty-eight thousand days minus half. That's fourteen thousand. So we all have fourteen thousand days to achieve all our dreams, our kids' dreams, our parents' dreams, whatever dreams we have. We've got fourteen thousand days to achieve it. Now I'm going to ask a very rude question. Don't worry, I won't ask the women. How old are you? Mm-hmm. Twenty-eight. All right, so you're here. That's finished. You only have that much time left. That's it. During this period of time, we have identified four fears. My first fear: What if I cannot work to sixty? You see, if I work till sixty, the only thing left was to retire. My second fear is, what if I don't reach sixty? My third fear: how much is enough to retire? How much is enough? Million dollars, five million dollars, ten million dollars? How much is enough? There is a number. And my fourth fear is, can I make sure that my children start life with the right foundation? and the best foundation is a good education now i've done this presentation in more than 50 countries i haven't found a fifth fear well not true i met some one guy who said sanjay i have a fifth fear i said what fear do you have he said sanjay i am scared that when i grow old i will be very lonely so i told him i said uncle by the way anyone older than me is uncle is just simpler I said, Uncle, if you have money, no one will allow you to be lonely. No money, no honey. So truly, all you need is a lot of money. So we found out there are only four fears in the world. What's the first fear? What if I don't reach sixty? Or what if I cannot work to sixty? That's the first fear. What is the product that we use for that? Income protection, which some of you call critical illness. 
it's income protection. Our industry made a mistake. The mistake that our profession has made is they have called a product critical illness. So when you ask a client, Mr. Client, would you like to buy some critical illness? It doesn't really sound very good. You know, I asked a client once because I was quite naive in the business many years ago. I asked a client, I said, uh, Mr. Client, I think you should buy critical illness. He's like, which one are you selling? My wife already gave me heart attack. <laughs> That's when I realized the choice of words is horrible. So instead of calling the product critical illness, I started calling it income replacement. And then I had a client once who said, Sanjay, can I give you personal advice? I said, yeah. He's like, you know, when you say the word income replacement, I feel like you're replacing me. I don't like to be replaced. And that's when I came up with the word income protection. So I focus on the word income protection. And the reason is it's got a positive note to it. Second, when I ask the question, do you want your income to be protected? What's the logical answer to that question? Yes, exactly. If someone says no, what should you do? You look at them and wonder why. Huh? What's wrong with you? Which person doesn't want their income to be protected? Seriously. You see, if you ask the right questions, you will get the right answer. So our industry made that mistake. Can we stop making that mistake? Yes. So from now onwards, instead of using the words critical illness protection, critical illness insurance, can you just say the word income protection? Yes. Can we agree to that? By the way, guys, that's step number one, learning to use the right words. That's step one. What's the second fear? What if I don't reach 60? Now, what can stop you from reaching 60? You pass away. Simple. What product do we use for that? Life insurance, period. Is there any alternative to that product? Is there an alternative to life insurance? There is none. There is no product that can be compared to life insurance. No product in the world. Because life insurance creates money that doesn't even exist. Life insurance creates money that doesn't even exist. How can you compare that to any product? You can't compare it to property, you can't compare it to investments, you can't compare it to gold, you can't compare it to business, you can't compare it to a fixed deposit. How do you compare something that creates money that doesn't even exist? What's our third fear? How much money is enough to retire? Correct? So how do you do retirement planning? What's the formula for retirement planning? Okay, how many glasses of water should you drink in a day? How many? Eight. Who told you? The doctor. Okay. Everyone knows, correct? You should drink how much water every day? Eight to ten glasses of water a day. Am I correct? Okay. Is that someone something that everyone knows? Yes. So how much money should you have for retirement? Why don't you have the answer to that question? How many of you need to do fact finding to give me that answer? What's the formula guys? Come on. 20% of whatever you earn, you save for retirement, period. 20% of whatever you earn. That's it, period. That's the formula. What's the formula if you're single? 25. You think your wife is only going to cost you 5%. Congratulations. What's the formula if you're single? 60% of whatever you earn. If you're single and you cannot save for 60% of whatever you earn. By the way, guys, this is not written in any book in the world. 
But let me give you the logic behind it because I did this in my PhD. If you cannot save 60% of your income when you're single, you can't afford to get married. If you are a couple, no children, how much money should you be saving? 40% of whatever you earn. Otherwise, you can't afford to be parents. Do you see the simple logic to it? Every individual addition in your family will cost you 20% of your income. Ouch, I know the feeling. I know the feeling because every time I work with singles, they're like, hey, bro, I can't get married. I said, I know. So let's start preparing for it. When you have the least responsibility, you should be saving more. When you have the maximum responsibility, you cannot save that much. So you come down to the most basic formula, which is 20% of whatever you earn. So you start here and you slowly reduce your saving as you change your lifestyle. Have you ever heard this before? No. Why? There's no book on this. There's no training that's ever been built on this actual formula. That's the formula for retirement planning. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to watch more of such videos, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. This is Dr. Sanjay Tolani. Together, let's make financial planning happier and easier for everyone.